All right, well, let's get things started here. Chase Briscoe driving the number 14 Mahindra Tractors Ford Mustang. Joining us from his hometown in Mitchell, Indiana this morning as we prepare for the Brickyard this weekend. Uh, we've got a short timeline here. Only got about 13, 14 minutes. So let's just kick it off with questions. If you've got one for Chase, raise your hand. Uh, Dustin, I'll kick it off with you. Go ahead, Dustin Law. Thanks. Live from a uh, hotel room in Indianapolis. So, <laughs> Hey, uh, a couple of things, Chase. Um, lots been made uh, of the international field here this weekend. Um, obviously, you raced against some of these guys uh, even earlier this year. And I'm just curious, do you have much relationship with any of these guys or any experiences or anything kind of stand out with any of these guys? Um. I would say the one that I had the most experience with is probably, probably uh, Brody Kostecki. Um, he's a guy that, you know, growing up, uh, you know, there's this big core group of guys that would play this R Factor video game on the computer, and we'd race dirt midgets and late models and stuff all the time. Is you know, me, Christopher Bell, Logan Seavey, um, a ton of just dirt guys, but Brody Kostecki was always on there as well and uh, was always super fast, like always the guy to be. We, we'd always – joke because he was so fast we call him cheat stecky because it was just unbelievable how fast he was all the time so uh i know brody for probably 12 15 years now um i don't know him well but i definitely know him um so he's probably the one i would say i had the most experience with uh you know i have very little experience with the other guys you know van gisbergen um he actually came on our factor as well and raced one night with us uh he probably doesn't remember it at all but um yeah i got a little bit of experience with those guys outside of them too i don't really have experience with any of them um but definitely kaseki I, I i know kaseki you know fairly well for sure and also uh if i'm not mistaken you're doing the you're down to do the uh, oval test uh monday and tuesday yep. at, on the speedway uh, obviously i know you've run it uh, in the xfinity in the xfinity car but just the idea of uh, running the cup car on on the oval and getting that opportunity uh this after the w race weekend yeah, it's going to be cool, honestly, I think for me, just knowing that, um, you know, I'll be one of the first three guys to, to run on the oval with this new next gen car will be um, something that I'm, I'm proud of. It's, it's cool to be able to do that. Um, it'll be nice to, to, to stay uh, in Indiana for a couple more days. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. it's going to be interesting. You know, I do think that, you know, this current car seems to race really well on those styles of racetracks. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting. I'm a little nervous about you know, what it's going to drive like truthfully. Um, and just if they try different packages and things, what that's going to drive like, but um, yeah, I'm excited for it. You know, I, I do think that there's a chance that, you know, this car could race really good there if we ever do go back to the oval. And, and obviously if we're testing it, I'm sure that's potential down the road. So um, yeah, just looking forward to the opportunity and it'll be cool. You know, anytime there's cars on the racetrack at IMS, it's a, it's a good day. And I'm glad that I'm going to be one of the guys driving them. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. All right, thank you, uh, Dustin. Let's go to uh, Mitchell Brewer. Hey, Mitchell. Chase, in the previous couple of years at the uh, road course at Indianapolis, we've seen how chaotic the race can really be. I was just wondering from a driver's standpoint, is there anything from your end where you think that there's any like strategies or anything like that that you could possibly do to avoid the chaos? Um, It's hard. I mean... I feel like you're never safe there, truthfully. I mean, you can be in the front row, you can be in the middle, you can be in the back row. I mean, I think I've wrecked in all, all three of those scenarios. So um, you're never safe there, especially on restarts. You know, that turn one is just such chaos every single time. You know, I do think that uh, with the new format, or I guess we're changing the start-finish line, or not start-finish line, but the restart zone potentially, you know, I think if we do that, it might help turn one a little bit but you're still going to have chaos just because we're going so fast. You know, that's probably the biggest Delta I feel like in turn one versus straightaway speed out of any road course we go, uh, I guess Coda would maybe be close, but um, you know, Coda's is not near as narrow as what Indy is. So um, I just feel like you're always open to chaos there and just calamity every time you have restarts there, just with how narrow it is in that section of the racetrack. But yeah, I don't I don't know if there's any strategy you can pull necessarily to, to be safe from all that. Thank you. Yep. All right, let's go to Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, uh, sorry if this has been already asked, but I'm curious what you're looking for out of the tire test on Monday and Tuesday. Um, I don't really know. I don't know what it's supposed to necessarily feel like there. Um, 
I think for me, I'm just looking for for our team just to try to get more of an understanding of what we need on the bigger tracks. You know, on the short tracks, I feel like we can go compete for top tens, top fives fairly, not easily, but just a lot more doable. Where on the big tracks, I mean, it's a struggle to run 20th. So I think for us out of this test, you know, we're just trying to figure out what that feel is. And even though Indy is such a unique racetrack compared to all the others, you know, that's probably the one thing that I would say we're looking for the most. Uh, but from a feel standpoint, I just want it to drive comfortable. Um, you know, obviously, Indy, we need to have a durable tire. Um, but I do think you need one that kind of wears out and has a little bit of you know, fall off as, as weird as or as hard as that's probably to get it Indy to have a big like fall off delta. But I definitely think we need to have a durable tire. You don't want, uh, you know, another race like we had, uh, whatever that one year was where they were blowing tires all the time. So. Yeah, I think if we're going to go back to the Oval, it needs to be a really good race, especially the first one. So hopefully uh, if we do that, we can find a tire at this test to kind of, you know, put on a good product. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Let's go to Trey Downey. Go ahead, Trey. Hey, Chase. Next week at Watkins Glen, where would you rank Watkins Glen as far as your comfort and confidence level as far as the road courses go and compared to – all of the road courses and this weekend at Indy? Um, I would say it's kind of middle of the road. You know, it's definitely not the worst one confidence wise that we go to. I would say that's Sonoma by a lot, uh, but it's definitely not, you know, at the top of the list either. I, I would say it's somewhere kind of in the middle. You know, I feel like if it, if it rains, then I feel really good about it. You know, last year in the rain there, we were able to, to win stage one and be really good in the wet there. So if it was to, to be wet, I feel really good about it. You know, in the dry, I don't feel as good there. I, uh, I've always been, you know, good there, but never fast enough to really lead or be up front. Um, I'm always kind of at 10th to 12th area. So I definitely need a little bit more there for whatever reason. I just can't seem to, to find it. But I would say I'm confident going there. Um, you know, it's one that I look forward to, you know, especially as we get, you know, three races left to lock into the playoffs. I feel like those are you know, two good opportunities. Um, just the road courses have always been statistically good for us. So um, hopefully we can have a good run this weekend and, and a good run next weekend. But I would say that the, the confidence level is kind of somewhere in the middle when we go to Watkins Glen. And then at Daytona, the, your two years that you raced there in the cutoff race, the first year you needed to win to get into the playoffs. Last year you were already locked in. Like what's kind of the difference in in the mindset going into that race in those two different situations? Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely, I don't know. I felt like my rookie year, I didn't really do a very good job in general on the on the super speedways, and even now, I, I still have a lot to learn. But you know, I feel like honestly, the mindset was a lot the same in the sense of just try to get to the end. Um, you know, the year that we needed to get a win, my rookie year. You know, obviously, you can't win the race if you're on the hook or if you're in the garage. So you know, just trying to to survive to the end and end up getting in a crash, and then you know, this the second race last year it was kind of the same mentality, truthfully, just get to the end because, you know, we didn't have to win, but if you could win, it was just more playoff points. And we got to where the rain was coming. I started getting aggressive and I think I crashed actually uh, leading the race around in second. So I don't know. I think you got to get to the end. I mean, we saw that last year with Austin, you know, just there was only like 10 or 12 cars even on the racetrack. And, you know, if you can miss the big wreck at the end, because the desperation is going to be so high, you know, you can, you can kind of sneak away with one and, you know, truthfully, I think this year is going to be the most chaotic one just because you have so many good cars uh, that are going to be in desperation mode. You know, you look at the 48, the 99, the, the 9, there's just a ton of really, really good cars that are going to have to win probably to, to get in. So it's going to be probably the most exciting cutoff race I think we've ever had in the history of the sport. Um, and hopefully all of us, you know, come out of that deal safe because there's definitely going to be a lot of, I feel like, really, really aggressive moves and just guys that are, are going to be on the on the rev limiter when it comes to the aggressive meter. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. All right, gang, we got about three or four minutes left here before we're going to have to run. Let's go to Brian Eberly. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, Chase, how's it going? Um, you're running the SRX race tomorrow night at Eldora. Um, how did that opportunity come about for you? When did you find out about it? And kind of what's your outlook for tomorrow night there? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, you know, I, I've never got a race against Tony, and, and obviously everybody here knows that he was my absolute hero. So for me, that was the biggest draw to run SRX was just I wanted to be able to say that I raced against Tony at some point in my career. And obviously know that that time was kind of dwindling down as he's probably not going to ever come run a NASCAR race. So um, 
the opportunity truthfully came super last minute. Um, last Thursday, I think at like three o'clock, Hawk called me and was like, Hey, we got an opening. Uh, would you be interested in coming and, and running SRX? They're like, we're going to try to announce it at you know, seven o'clock or eight o'clock, whenever the, the TV window is tonight. Um, so it was super last minute. I, I, like I said, I literally found out Thursday afternoon. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. High point, um, you know, my cup sponsor is going to be on too, which is really cool. And, uh, it's at Eldora, which is super special to me in general. Um, and, and racing against my boss and, and hopefully can beat him at his own racetrack. Awesome. And where's your truck win in 2018 there rank amongst your career accomplishments for you? Um, I would say, honestly, that's like third or fourth. Um, cool. you know, I would put the Indy Xfinity race over it. Uh, my first cup win would, would be there. And honestly, the Darlington race is obviously there. But outside of that, I mean, I, I was the Eldor truck win right there with the cup race, just from a personal standpoint. Um, you know, for me, growing up a dirt guy, Eldora was my Daytona. Um, if you got a race at Eldora, um, it, it meant something. It, and I feel like all of my heroes were always able to win at Eldora and, and go on to that stage there on the front straightaway. So um, for me, Eldora is super special for that reason. So, um, you know, it's a privilege every time I get a race there. And hopefully I can uh, win victory lane there again. Thanks, Chase. Good luck tomorrow night and this weekend. Yeah, yeah thank you. All right, we've only got one or two more minutes. So I did want to check Lee Spencer. You just chimed in. Do you have a question for Chase before we have to run? I don't. I'm just kind of trying to catch up on the golf course, but thanks for asking, Dave. Gotcha. Okay, let's close it out then with Brian Mino. Brian, you get the final question with Chase today. Go ahead. Hello, Chase. Brian Mino for the Victory Lane Network, Argentina. Chase, it has been a difficult season because of the loss of championship and playoff points but you had the chance to finish race in good position. How do you describe your current season? Yeah, it's definitely been uh, an interesting season, to say the least. I feel like I've never had a season where it's been so just either really, really good day or really, really bad day. You know, we either run top five, top 10, or we run 30th or worse. There's just no in-between. So that part's been just extremely head-scratching. Um, you know, it's been hard, you know, even with the loss, of, you know, when we lost the, the points at the time we were in the playoffs or right there on the, on the bubble. And now even with those points, we, we wouldn't even be close. I don't think so. Uh, you know, for us right now, we're just trying to truthfully build for next year with the new crew chief. I think we're five weeks in now, you know, we know that this season, especially if we don't win one of these next three weeks, we're not really racing for anything as far as, you know, playoffs or points go. But we can still make ourselves way better. We have 13 weeks to, to make ourselves better before the 2024 season and really kind of find a, a foundation and just what we need to do as a team. So I think that's our main focus is just continuing to try to get better. Um, you know, as much as we would love to throw a Hail Mary and try to win one of these next couple of races, and even the ones in the past couple of weeks, truthfully, we haven't had the speed to do that. So uh, I think first priority is finding the speed to be able to throw Hail, Hail Marys and then. Um, try to just build our team to be the best as it can be going into 2024. Chase, thank you and good luck in this weekend. Yep, thank you. Yeah, Chase, we'll root for a really, really, really good day on Sunday for you. So yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you being flexible with your time and uh, best Absolutely. of luck tomorrow night in the SRX race and this weekend in Indy. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. Appreciate you joining the call today. We'll get a transcript out here in a few minutes and uh, we'll be back again next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.